Hello, this is How Could It Be, and, and today we are going to read some more of SCP-001 Amani Ram, which is uh, Rounder House's gold old proposal. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. So many addendums. There's so much here. Section 001.5, Later Research. The additional personnel and records that and recruit musicians arrived via airlift to ARF-01 through March and April of 1984. The sudden threefold increase in personnel required immediate expansion. ARF-02 was established in another structurally intact skyscraper in the southern district of Amani Ram, each site now holding approximately 100 personnel. To connect the two sites, the disused rail system of Amani Ram was back, out back into functional condition to ferry materials and personnel. This further necessitated in the repair and refurbishment of the utilities power grid and reactors. Using technical assistance from SCP-001-A1 and its automatons, while the cold fusion and reactors required extensive study and repair. The relatively simple uh, nuclear reactors incorporating paratechnology were slowly brought online using requisition and nuclear fuel. On April 12th, the first two atomic reactors came online, providing power to the entire western and southern districts of the city, allowing use of lighting, air conditioning, and of the rail system to ferry personnel and materials between the two sites. And here's a, an attached transcript from April 1984. With the interviewers being Dr. Hedvig Nesbaum and Dr. Robert Aram, and the subject being SCP-001-A1. SCP-001-A1's head is just upwards. You are repairing my city! Hello to you, too. Yes, I suppose we are. I hope that's not a problem. No! Your help was invaluable. The, the technology, it's a marvel. We would have taken years to figure it out alone. You would have eventually no matter! You might have noticed that there are a lot more of us lately. Yes, you are settling into the ruins! Well, no, I wouldn't... You are assisting my city! You are permitted! Oh, well, thank you. I want to probe you on some history. I do not know what help I can be! I have guided you to the historical records! <sighs> yes, yeah, so we would like a primary source. So you yourself remember or nothing about the city you call home? What happened at the end of the Empire, perhaps? I'm deeply sorry if we offended. Curiosity should never be an offense, but I do not have the answers you seek. My memory, it is fragmented. My mind is sundered. I remember little more than hazes and flashes. Images sitting at the market, eating a fruit and waiting for mother, playing with the other children and falling, crying as my brother fixed the welds and screws on my leg. My mind is not my own. So you weren't always like this. You were human? I was better. I was a mechanite. This was not always my form. This much I know. But who I was... How I arrived in this state, I do not. But I remember the sky cracking as down came the walls, and the lancemen held this black held back the tide of monstrosities and vendor so we could escape to the other city. That does explain the corpses. Jesus. I cannot tell you with the my history, because I do not remember, but I can help you find it yourself. Hmm. 
How? I told you of the Fulad uh, throne, and how it was used by each emperor of Bumara to call the uh, wisdom of all predecessors. It accepts memories, imprints it into special cylinders, and feeds them um, um, to its occupants through their augments. The cylinders we found in the basement. Wait, so if I sat in a chair, the throne, and someone fed the cylinder in, I would see the memory, feel it in my arm and leg? Yes, all that is required is a fist. The what? An heirloom of the Imperial family, a special augment, allowing them to use the throne. The throne is one of the most mystical and powerful artifacts ever created. The fist ensures only those that were meant to sit on it could use it. Okay, where is this fist? You already have it! The machine you gave me? It fits perfectly on the end of my arm. That's not a coincidence, is it? No, but I am as blind to what brought about the end of the Immaculates as you. Go now and discover our legacy. Tell me, so I might remember what I was before. End log. Upon their exit from the Undercity, Project Leeds immediately assembled a team made for the palace to investigate the throne. The hum of machinery was barely audible from inside. It was concluded that Ring of the City's power online had returned the throne to working in order. The left armrest contained a port that fit the cylinders recovered from the library, while the right contained a depressed section molded into around the grip of the fist. Testing was immediately commenced. Well, that's a poor decision, especially without any permission for like 05 or anything. Oh well. Attached transcript. April 1984. I am not sure about this, Robert. I trust Reserver. I'm the only one molded mine out enough to get a good view of what the memory is, and you need to be here to make sense of what I'm seeing. You'll be fine. Still. It's not like we have a lot of options if we want to figure out what happened. Aram settles into the throne, placing the fist into his suppression. <sighs> wow, this thing is uncomfortable. Go on and put the cylinder in. Okay, your engineers are out by the power line. Just say the word and we'll shut it down. Are we recording? Okay. Nosfam steps to the side of the throne, placing the metal canister into it. It sinks into the e slot, and the throne begins emitting a steadily increasing hum of machinery and clicking. After several seconds, a noise locks the fist in place. Oh shit. Here we go. Aram's eyes fill with a pale golden light, and he arches his spine. Held in place by the fist, he rides wordlessly in the throne, gasping. Robert? Robert! Oh shit! Oh frick, frick, frick! I see it! Oh gosh! Sh no! I can handle it! Aram continues to write, bucking forward and backward in the throne, before abruptly ceasing and coming into a seated position. Robert, are you there? What do you see? Oh my god, it's beautiful. What is? I'm, I'm standing on the palace, the balcony, facing the eastern district, the sun is rising, it's casting this fucking beautiful, dappled light across the city. I can see all of it. The buildings, there's no skyscrapers, it's not ruined, it's perfect. 
The streets are bustling with activity, the markets, people are hawking their wares, shouting, it's a living, breathing fucking city. They're all, they all have biotics of some sort. The sun hits the horizon as I can see them. Their arms or legs or faces shining. I'm turning. I'm turning away and heading into the palace. The scene changed. What is it? I'm, I'm sitting in a carriage. Some sort of car thing being driven through the streets. There's guards all around me, armored and covered in swords and some sort of primitive gun. And I have the window down. People are throwing, no offering things to me. Bread, wine, fruits, gifts. Someone just let a canvas in. It's an Oreo painting of a man. A huge brown man with a beard and, oh god, it's me. I'm Bumaro. It's a painting of me. Half the body is all full on left leg and both arms. I'm smiling, waving to the people. We're talking. It's Mechanite. I can't... Understand them. Just repeat the noise. I'll translate later. Thank you. Your lord loves you. Mechain honors us all. Just lots of happy shouting. A Karek in the palace now. I'm on the throne. There's people in the throne room. Soldiers, I think. Generals. The most important report one is a woman. And this dragon armor? They're all pouring over a huge map of... I think it's Asia. It's all fucked up like the one in the engravings. There's lines drawn everywhere. Symbols. There's three big circles. One in Egypt. One's in India. One's on the Chinese coast. They're all yelling, arguing. They're all looking at me. I look right to the right. There's a woman there. She's beautiful. Her eyes are gone. It was just a golden mask. But she's beautiful. There's this intricate set of gold, golden metal feathered wings on her back. I love you so much. There's a little boy next to her. It's my wife and son. I look at the generals. I nod. The covenant go too far. Prepare the golden legion. The light disappears from Aram's eyes and the lock re release. Aces. He slumps backwards, unconscious. Robert! Medic! Dr. Aram was removed from the throne and taken to the infirmary at ARF-1. Medical personnel found he had a slightly elevated blood pressure and heartbeat, consistent with strenuous physical activity, but was otherwise healthy. He was placed in an infirmary bed the following day. A and he was conscious, active, and responsive with, at the normal levels. Closer inspection and revealed no lasting physical or neurological damage from the incident. And Dr. Aram indeed expressed a closer interest in the archaeological team's findings in the following days, signing his experience as giving him a newfound interest in the extant Mechanite culture. When the findings from the throne and test were transcribed and analyzed, other records found in the city were translated. Attached document from April 1984. And the sweep of the Golden Legion took three long centuries of expansion as the Mechanite's empire is led against established beautiful Harmonious Dominion in the oasis and villages of the world. And as they expanded, they found relics, artifacts, shield for, sheared from Mechane during their god's fall from heaven, scattered over the earth, and which each relic carried back to Imani realm. The further the people grew and grew as their leaders rose, warred, and died for their heirs. And as the legion marched forward and over those long centuries, two other nations of man marched. The Covenant of the Deva rode forth on their great horrible spirit beasts, searing a path through, a path through the, the jungle over from their twin city of Manju Okarar. And they used their black magic to open a gap, stepping from one side of the continent to another. And those that went through established another city, Aditum, that would, after another two centuries, fall to its own slaves, bringing themselves a Naka. Oh, the everlasting battle between the Psychic cult and the God and the Church of the Broken God. They're both cults in their own right, if you ask me, but you know, they have different names. And all these parties march into Asia, only vaguely aware of the existence of the other two until the Battle of Harumar, where they collided. The existence was an affront. The disgusting flesh breeze of the Naka, uh, an insult to the steel glory of Mechane, and the Covenant's plant spears choking and infesting the gears and wheels of the Legion. 
and so the Legion fired the first mortar, shattering the Covenant's ranks, and thus began a war which would end with the destruction of Asia. The, force, the first war raged across the continent every theater. Fleets of golden and hold warships constructed in a mining realm and pushed down river to encounter the Covenant in the bay. The Naka raised an army of the dishonored dead from Aditem and marched them ceaselessly to throw themselves in the front line, choking the vines of the sorcerer Nawabs. There were no laws in war. There is no honor in death. Every corpse was fodder for future battles. Forests were scorched during retreat to the night of Covenant Sea, and the warriors of the Naka and Covenant chose to throw their weapons in the sea rather than surrender the precious belts and foundries of the Legion. And the Colossi, great thousand armed tall collides of steel and bronze and fula that rent the sky down upon the Inaka and hordes. Every second man was killed in the fighting, and it raged for three hundred years, and would have gone on forever until the abominate landed his ships to the western coast of Ethiopia and began his march to Imani Ram. Devastation. <sighs> well, I think the Colossi are, is actually something that uh, we can discover in another SCP, as if I can find a, a number for it. A week later, Dr. Aram once again volunteered to use the throne. Citing his quick recovery and the wealth of potential ancient knowledge hidden in the accounts of the various emperors as Bumaro. Attached Transcript, May 1984 Begin Log Do you feel alright? Dandy, I know what to expect this time. I'm prepared. Still, do not go so far this time. Worried about me? About that th own... Dumkoff? Sure, I'm ready. Okay, it looks like last time you saw the beginning of the Mechanite Empire's war. Possibly through the eyes of the original Lamaro. From there, we think we have managed to figure out a rough chronological order for the cylinders. So today, I want to try to get something from the middle. Aren't we looking for something at the end? I thought you'd be able to discern who exactly is attacking the city in the panic and confusion. We need to go slightly back, try to see if we can deduce which way the winds are blowing, what the nature of the Naka and the Covenant are exactly. Okay, we also need to try to figure out the historical setting of these empires, their influence on their contemporaries. I don't exactly control what I see, you know. Aha, uh -huh, but I believe you can. It would not be very useful if, if the kings could not specify what knowledge they wanted to recall from their forefathers. How would I do it? Focus your thoughts. Try to recall. You have no idea, do you? Aram laughs. laughs. Okay, here we go. Let's bomb and the cylinder into the throne, inciting the same reaction as before from Aram. Though significantly less violent and more controlled. Oh shit, okay, it's different. It's all. Wait, this isn't a monogram. This is somewhere else. Describe it to me. So, oh yeah, it's still in the desert, it, but it's like a movie desert. All perfect sand dunes, a stone city, a wide, flat, not advanced like a monogram. Monuments, statues, there's a river, it's fucking massive. We haven't been here before. This is the Nile! This is Luxar! This is Thebes! We're in Egypt! There is our historical contemporary. It's late. The sun's setting. setting. I'm. Okay, I'm a Umaro sitting at the head of a caravan. We're riding automatons. Six late beetle things. We're pulling into Thebes. There's a party waiting for us, and we're being welcomed into the city. We're in a throne room now. There's a man sitting on a throne. It's a pharaoh. Based on the time frame, that would be Menkare? 
the builder of the smallest of the Giza pyramids. We are talking, exchanging gifts. Pleasantry. Wait, no. I just sent all the servants out. It's just us and our bodyguards now. We're discussing something. He just asked if he can expect my support against the... Something called the Abominate. My army is already spread in to enforce peace in my land. I cannot afford to be involved in your affairs, Pharaoh. We're arguing, shouting. The Abominate is marching on Amon and Ram, and he will cause swath through Egypt and stack your corpses to build a bridge across the Nile for his army. If I route the covenant at Domed, we can send and united. He's. I said no. I'm leaving. He's angry. Why doesn't he understand? There are bigger things at stake. Robert, focus. What is happening? Same, no, different scene, different throne room, different ruler. A man in a robe and turban. Urban, looks Arab or Ottoman or something. He's shaking his head. Now some sort of tribal chief in a tent. A Bruce prince. We're discussing establishing trade routes, selling our fulad, the technology. They're willing to trade, but they don't want to get involved with the roar and risk the knockout or the covenant. So there are contemporaries, but they do not risk their heads in a clash between titans. Okay, now... Oh, sweet Christ. Robert? It's... Oh my god. We're in a city. A ruined city. There's jungles around it. It's aflame. The sun is setting. The smoke's thick in the air and rising in flumes. I'm standing on a bluff. There's a regiment behind me. My soldiers, the Golden Legion, are lobbing things into the city. Firebombs and mortars. They're scaling the walls. The defenders are... They look... Indian, like people from India. Almost. They're running in terror. There's ghosts? Some kind of spirit swirling in the air, mixing with the smoke. We're bringing down the walls and killing the soldiers on the battlements. I'm... There's someone behind me. The general... The woman in the dragon armor. The troops are looking to her. I'm giving her a nod and she screams something and they charge down the bluff. This giant metal armor suit leading the charge. They're shattering the line. Jesus. It's a freaking massacre. She's holding up a... She's holding a sword up. Holy crap. Lang just struck it. Now I'm in the city. I'm on my mouth surveying the ruins. The woman is beside me. I touch her head. I can see myself in her helmet. I'm young. I can't be more than 25, but I'm in the intricate battle armor. There's survivors. There's someone dragging themselves across the dirt, holding their guts in. Jesus. Heck. What? She just stepped on his head. Something burst out. The spirit flame thing just shot into the air. His brains are on the dirt. Oh man, I'm gonna be sick. Focus, Robert. Please. Try to think of Amani Ram. Oh, okay. We're there. I'm staying in palace. It's... The city's militarized. There's guards in the, gr in the streets and the walls have... Are those machine gun turrets? Are you talking to someone? Yes, an engineer. Is McCain's kiss ready? We can't be sure without testing it, but we feel confident. The understudy hasn't re... Edge plates fit all the components. They require a simply tremendous power source, but it works. There's something in the distance. Oh, oh, holy fuck. What is it? There's mechs. They're gigantic. They have to be 200 feet tall. Four legs and two arms. They're moving slowly, but they're freaking huge. I can see three of them from here. They're circling the city. 
Are they approaching? No, they're enforcing a perimeter. There are weapons. Oh man, this isn't a war. This is an, an apocalypse. Okay, time to take a break, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron removes himself from the throne. Robert? Yes? When did you learn to speak Mechanite and Egyptian? I have no idea. Upon the discoveries of the epical scale of the first war waged between the three empires, researchers began to take a special priority on war records and weapons technology that may have been left behind over the course of the following weeks. Records of manufacture and shipment for thousands of ammunition and supplies were translated. Revealing a scale of war production previously considered impossible and antiquity and rivaling the war output of developed nations in the modern era. In addition, the reference to the McCain's Kiss suggests it to be an extremely powerful superweapon of some sort, inside a new flurry of research into components and devices in the Undercity. Hmm. Attached document from June 1984. From the desk of researcher or Muhammad Ed Zaid. Memo to Dr. Robert Aram. I understand you're recovering from extended experimentation with the throne. Not to disturb your rest, but the team thinks we've come up with a solid theory on what the device under the city, the McCain's Kiss, is. Just some background context. Some of the geologists that came in during the second wave of personnel made some interesting but at the time irrelevant discoveries, amounting to the revelation that the sand within SCP-001 is of a slightly different chemical composition to the sand outside it. <coughs> The sand inside is more similar to a kind of white sand found in a section of the Arabian Desert, several hundred miles to the northeast. We all know what to make of it, but the recent research into the Undercity has changed things. We've mapped out the whole device. It occupies 65% of the Undercity's volume. Practically everything is connected to that, to it that isn't stuff like the sewers. Its components have also become more understandable that our with our new experience of mechanic design, architecture, and philosophy. The technology is antiquated, but it's all almost but it's almost all paratech. Extremely powerful con conduits, converters, connections, etc., all terminating in a small chamber emitting extremely high levels of radiation. We sent a protective probe and warding it. It it melted a few minutes later, but we ran the pictures and energy signals against the database and got nothing. We've never seen anything like it. But then Ten decided to call in a few favors and run against the GLC database. Apparently they've seen something like it and tried to weaponize it. A long distance, large scale, batter D slash reconstructor and emitter. A gigantic teleporter basically. Very big enough to move an entire city hundreds of kilometers. McCain's kiss isn't a super weapon, it's a Hail Mary. Unfortunately, it's completely burned out. It required a team in months to get it back into re remotely working order. And that's ignoring the problem of power. It's way too demanding to pull off from the city's power grid. We think it gets draws directly from the cold fusion reactors, which is another impossibility. Plus, we just still don't know how it was controlled or how any of the computation works without, well, computers. In any case, I don't think I'm on any rot on will be teleporting anywhere soon. And here's another attached transcript from June 1984. And in the 60th year of the war, as the fighting reached a crescent, and though Anthomid burned 
were the shelling of the legion and on the flesh hordes of the Naka. The matriarch of the covenant and the grand Kaiser's eon met under the shadow of night in the black catacombs of Aditum. And there they came to understand the truth. Bitter enemies though they might be, the flesh of the Naka and the plants of the covenant were an extension of each other. Both extrusions of the natural world, evenly matched, neither could truly destroy the other. But the Mechanite's flesh steel was something else. A gift from the sky woke April of crushing each of them. But together, they stood a chance. And such it was that, as the invasion plans were drawn and the great siege engines were constructed and the pole arms cooled in the foundries, the Golden Legion marshaled and marched themselves, beginning the long, bloody truck to Aditum. As they crossed the desert of Asia, the Naka were leading their forces to another invasion. This one raised by the Eva, by the, the sorcerer Nawaz with the Deva against Amani Ra. A black wicked army secretly gathering in the jungles of the south, marching on the suddenly vulnerable first realm of the Mechanites. And with them came the magics. The Naka offered one of their greatest his boons, a plague to infest the city. And the Covenant offered the song of the Deva to make the verdant greenery of the desert rebel against its master. And even then, their marshaled forces were not enough to dominate the Colossi and take the city. But in the far west, beyond the gate, another storm was brewing. The Abominate. May his name never be spoken in of stood on the shores of the coast as the damned fleet disembarked from their massive ships. And his army assembled itself from his prisoners and his soldiers. And the march to the East to Amani Ram began. The city settled between two unstoppable forces, neither aware of the other's presence. As the two armies pushed the walls of the pushed through the walls of the city, and the, the head of its king, queen, and general. Another meeting with L five eleven was scheduled for June twenty sixth to ascertain the progress of the Amani Ram initiative, and relay new discoveries discovering the regarding the fate of the Mechanite culture. On June 25th, an unidentified aircraft was detected 10 kilometers away from SCP-001. Upon confirmation the aircraft was approaching SCP-001's entrance, ARF radioed it asking for, identif for identification. The aircraft responded with valid Overwatch command credentials, coming to a close landing and allowing 0511 to disembark and enter SCP-001. Escorted by MTF Alpha-1, Right, right, red, right hand. Attached trans transcript from June 1984. Begin log. <sighs> o five eleven is sit ending in one of the um, in one of the Monty Rams um, thoroughfares. An Alpha-1 agent stands on every nearby corner and window. The sun is directly overhead, but the cooling and power units on the street corners keep the air at room temperature. A hot, silent wind passes through the broadway. Air and nest bomb approach from the north. Nest bomb. Out of breath. Hello, sir. Oh, 0511. Sorry about the oh, welcome. We weren't expecting you. I arranged a meeting, didn't I? Yes, we weren't expecting you to, uh... Show up in person. Don't blame you. We're not exactly an outgoing bunch. But I've heard so many great things about the city over the uh, past year. About its secrets, architecture, technology, culture, history. I want to see it for myself. Everything you were hoping for? That and more. I'll admit, it does look a lot nicer now that you've started to rebuild the place. <sighs> Thanks, we've managed to get primary power back online, along with the train system, a lot of the city's 
is navigation and maps and such. The power and climate control as well, obviously. We're going to try and get the city's weaponry back online and soon. See what kind of defensive technology they were packing. Hold that thought, Dr. Nesbaum. Yes? I'm told your historical team has made several breakthroughs recently, especially using the Throne Anomaly, which, if I recall correctly, you're the primary test subject for, Dr. Aram? That's correct. We've done about a dozen tests since we discovered it. Only a handful have turned up anything substantial. It's mostly fragmented memories from old kings, watching as the streets swell over citizens and goods flood into markets, visions of battlefields as the Mechanite army takes on the Covenant and the Naka. Right, and of course, you've translated how many of the recovered tablets now? Dozens. Over a hundred. But like the throne records, most are simple, but not all correspondence. But not the recent ones. Correct. I have a presentation compiled in my office. Shall we? Lead the way. <sighs> Thus bomb, Aram 051 and the Alpha 1 operatives enter the office inside AR ARF 02. It fully covers from the higher or floors from the massive skyscraper inside. The furniture is a combination of metal and intricate stonework. A wall of windows looks out over the city. The group takes a seat in front of the desk. Hmm. I expected more of a cantonment. But no, you seem quite comfortably set up here. That's from laughs. <laughs> well, we have been here for nearly a year now. Plenty of time to settle in. Exciting to the second side has also helped free up space. Everyone has their own chamber. Home sweet home. Anyway, as you know, we have made great strides recently in determining the fate of Amani Ram and the Mechanite culture at large. Using translated historical records in tandem with the throne visions and SCP-001-A1 to mainly limited accounts. It is established that the date of a covenant originating from the Indian subcontinent and the Naka are likely from the from Central or East Asia, but the lay record is repeatedly mentioned in the fourth party, the so-called Abominant. As of now, we know functioning nothing about who or what this is, only that they were in possession of a fleet of uh, seafaring vessels that landed on the shores west of Amani Ram, in the Old Country. My, hypothesi my hypothesis is that this is West Africa. The records say this figure marched to Armani Realm. While the Covenant and, and Naka Coalition marched from the east, yes. An army crossing the entire breadth of the Sahara 4,000 years ago is hard to believe. It's not the strangest thing we've seen out here. Indeed, we also have reason to believe that the Gobi Desert was a significant theater in the First War, which would suggest the three primary cultures also had some, some sort of experience warring in deserts. You say three primary cultures. You don't include the Avenant in the equation. Sorry about that. Where were we? We are not sure if they're human yet, much less a distinct culture group. The Aegean tablets also do not mention any fourth party in the first war. However, I also have been in contact with some colleagues of mine at King Saud University, researching the mundane dominant culture in the northwest. They recently unearthed a trove of tablets in the region. Apparently detailing a cataclysmic battle between four armies of or control of a major city. Bingo. Yes, I already have some people translating it. It is quite complex, but all translations should be ready within the month. In any case, the Mechanite record, as we have found, indicate that in the later stages of the war, the Naka and David Covenant allied themselves to take Amani Ram, while the Mechanite, its Golden Legion, 
march across Asia to Arita, the Naka capital. This covers three of our armies, and, ev and evidently the abandonment is a fourth. But they also implied the combined force of the Naka and David Covenant was not enough to take the city, that the Abnet, whatever it is, is more responsible for the fall of Amani Ra. God damn. That's disconcerting. But I suppose that there's nothing to do now but wait for the translations, yes? That would appear to be the case. Right. Dr. Aram, you said you had updates about the technology? That's right. We discovered a lot of mil military weapons. It looks like they range from um, close quarters combat pole arms and swords and what seem to be primitive chainsaws to long range shoulder mounted and mortars and elephant guns. These were all in ruined warehouses in the sacked portion of the city. I've also made a few interesting finds in the other city. Do tell. First, if you see, it's a functional power armor of the kind in the, in the throne wreck. Records exoskeletons to enhance strength, speed, durability, so not even flight capable through, a fight for, through gravity defying paratechnology. Unfortunately, they were are unusable without a mechanite implants to link to. Well, that's a goddamn shame. I'm guessing that people back then all had mechanite implants. Was a few days later, SCP 001A directed us to another or chamber in the Undercity. This one filled with assembly lines, industrial sections, and crates on crates of mechanite implants, foulard and steel ionic arms, legs, prosthetics, torso cages, even heads, and of course, sensory implants, replacement visuals, and sensory suites just like ours. The Foundation already gives those things out like candy, so I think they're worth experimenting on with the class. You want to outfit D class with millennia old cybernetics so you can put them inside highly destructive mech suits. You know I can't approve that, Robert. Hmm, I see. The risk is is just too great. Sure, okay. In the meantime, we'd like to try and see if the city's defensive systems still work. The ones I saw in my vision and the max gun emplacements. These visions, you trust them? I do. See them with my own two, well, not eyes, but you know what I mean. Why wouldn't I? Maybe I'm just old fashioned, but I don't lay in my I don't, but I don't lay my faith in all the technology quite so easily. I'd be wary, but if what you said is true, then there's at least two super weapons in the city that the foundation could deeply benefit from. Those colossuses is are impressive, and of course the teleporter, McCain's kiss. It's not... Yes, sir. I'm going to need lots of supplies. Ethereum and Itium, most impo importantly. We're going to try and bring those cold fusion reactors online. That's a big ask. And a dangerous one. We'd like to know how the city was destroyed before we accidentally blow it up. <laughs> We've already messed with us with the technology we you've discovered. And we did have Preserver to assist us. And we do have Preserver to... Who, who assists us still? SCP 001A1. Yes. Still. Discovering the city's defense and how effective they are is crucial to getting an accurate image of the battle. Right, Hedvig? I. Yes. Yes, it is. I support the idea. Hmm. Well, if both of you are in agreement, I can make it happen. But be safe and don't take any needless risks. We don't want anything happening this far in. Yes? Of course. End log. Hmm. 
<sighs> this section is going on for quite a while. Let's see. An attached document from July 1894. Yeah, I'll be able to remember that. We need to end the video here, though. That was another part of Amani Ram. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye. Oh wait, I do know what I'm doing. I'm going to be reading more of this from where we left off. Sorry. So until then, goodbye.